Welcome back. It is, man, it is a nice day this morning because it's been pretty crummy all week long. The plane, as you can see, is still really muddy from last week's flight out to Haya. This was like last Friday. It's Wednesday now. I still have not been able to complete those extra two flights with my passengers, so they've been staying here in Groke. I feel terrible for them. But I tried yesterday and it just did not work. I had a good weather report from them out there, but it was uh, it was not clear enough. Anyway, today I'm heading to Yambai Talk. I have not been to Yambai Talk since I've been back in PNG now for a couple of months, so I'm excited to get out there. Then in the afternoon, I'm gonna try to do the Haya flights. Hopefully get them done today. This Yambai Talk was actually scheduled for tomorrow. I'm doing it in the morning because it's cloudy out there right now but it's supposed to clear in the morning. So I'm gonna get the plane ready. It's already fueled. Not much else to do, except load, I think like 550 kgs or something. All right, I've got 300 kgs here, so I've got to have at least six ropes. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ropes, and then I have two ropes tying down the front. Well, he hasn't done that yet, so I'm gonna do that because each one of these little mounts right here on the floor only is rated for 100 pounds, so roughly 50 kgs. I know it's a little bit less than that, but We've got eight, so we've got covered right there. Let's go do those fronts. And what this does, basically, is if I were to crash and flip upside down, this would hold the load down in the front as well, because the net actually goes underneath of the cargo, about a foot, comes out and then wraps around. So this is pulling it down. The reason being is so that the net can't stretch any. Whereas if you start here, if you were to hit something, crash, whatever else, go off the runway, the cargo can still shift unless the net is pulled tight underneath. So if I had to climb out through the back door, this will allow the cargo to stay tied down to the floor even if I'm upside down in theory. Let's go through the weather together, what I have available to me. Um, my contact out there said that it is looks to be a nice day but there is so, still some kind of clouds at the end of the runway, but he thinks they might clear off by the time I get out there in about 45, 50 minutes. It's just a 40 minute flight out there. So we use the Windy app here in Papua New Guinea. It's Wednesday the 30th at 8 a.m., right on the dot. And you guys can see out here, there's just a little bit of blue. This is just a forecast, mind you. And there's just a, a very slight little bit of clouds potentially showing over. If we go to the low clouds, it's showing a little bit of like scattered clouds right over the top of Yambai Talk right this minute. Let's scroll up to nine o'clock. Now it's still showing. Let's go up to 10. Looks like it gets worse. So it's showing uh, there is gonna be potentially a little bit of low clouds right there at Yambai Talk. I hate to get all the way out there and have to turn around, but let's go ahead and go to cloud bases. It's not really filling in. You guys can see all the squares. That's kind of annoying, but that's just PNG. So that's at nine. So next thing, next thing is our weight and balance. So I've already taken all the seats out. You guys can see if you have all the seats in there, you hit this button here and all those seats go away. It says down here, I've got four seats in the hat rack. I've got 128 in the front pod, 43 in the second pod, and we've got 301 back here. So let's just split that up, 151 and 150 down here. So you guys can see I'm still really well within my envelope, and I've got 990 pounds of fuel. So let's go ahead and put this into here. I've got a thousand and forty pounds of cargo. And our aircraft weight is forty three sixty three. 
and we've got 990 pounds of fuel which puts us right at 6600 pounds here or 6605 or within 10 so that is good enough for me we got our flight plan in here we're going Goroka Yambai Talk there we go but we're gonna get rid of Chimbu because I think the flight out there is gonna be perfect going out there blue skies above us out here and then lastly we're gonna just verify we've got 472 kgs and we've got 472 kgs right there and that's it well let's go ahead and get started he just sent me a picture of what it looks like out there and I'll show that to you in just a minute all right 14 percent and above we'll add our fuel low pressure is coming up fuel flow is now showing ITT is coming up come back and forth between NG and ITT now just ITT 605 that is the nice thing about WhatsApp in this country is it does work pretty well All right so that is what it is looking like so yeah there's just some low lining clouds I can see where I turn final there are a couple clouds not really touching the runway, but like I said, it's going to be 50 minutes almost before I get out, 45 minutes before I even get out there. I'm hoping by then it will have cleared out. I hope to get back here by 11 so that I can do two higher flights this afternoon. If it's nice, I'll stay late if need be because i got to get those done. Grok Tower, November, Tango Echo. Request taxi, Yambai Talk, 1 POB. November, Tango Echo, good morning. Stage 4, 1, left. Backtrack line up, finish 1021. Go to backtrack on line up. Once and left, 1021, November Tango Echo. All right, let's get our landing and our taxi on. This is the first day that we've seen blue sky in over a week. So this is going to be a nice day. Do our governor check and our strokes. Right, there is 2060, so 2070, and then add some power past that, and it goes over top, as I let the button go. If you're a flight simmer, you're gonna have to check out my Patreon page down below, and you wanna fly some of these flights that I get to fly, on either X-Plane, Microsoft Flight Sim. I actually have Yumbai Talk available for you guys, a link or a download that you guys can add to your game. For Microsoft Flight Sim for sure, I, I don't remember if X-Plane or not. So if you're into that kind of stuff, definitely check the link out. I've probably got a hundred different flights on there with charts and weather and a link with the flight video so you can kind of follow along, sort of, because these aren't really the full length anyway because that'd be really, really long. Good morning, good morning. They're taking a kilo morning, flight. flight taxi for WeWAC, one PAB. All right, we'll be 50 knots by our taxiway. Brad's getting ready to come out, so I gotta get out of here. Otherwise, we'll just stop on the runway if we have any problems. After takeoff, pitch for 85 knots, consider EPL, consider feather. Uh, taxi pull up and shut off. 8580. Right. Uh, I first ride on mid-taxiway, big trick right now. Taxi for 1-7 right, cross at Delta, never take a kilo. Okay, I guess he's just gonna send him right in front of me. <laughs> All right, ignition, inlet, and lights are done. We'll get takeoff glance while he's taxiing in front of me. We will go ahead and get this map going here. Let's see, Yumbai Talk. Our track is gonna be boom, right out into this area right here. November Tango Echo, ready for departure. November Tango Echo, runway one turn left. Make a right turn clip for takeoff. One seven left, right turn clip takeoff. November Tango Echo. Ignition condition flaps 20, fuel and harnesses 22, so 1390. Same as every single morning of the year. Rotate 60.
All right, torque is set, pretty close to 1390, airspeed's alive. There's 50 continuing, and there's 60 for rotate. Up my power ITT just to 740, just a tiny bit more. And then pack it right back down a couple. There we go. I'll pitch it for seven and a half degrees on the attitude indicator, which gives us really close to 85 knots. And the reason I fly out 85 is if I had an engine failure right now, 85 knots from basically going idle, it takes me 300 feet to recover as if I was going any slower than that. 73 knots, best angle, it takes 500 feet to recover. So that's why I go out at 85 knots. All right, well, we're 500 feet now, so let's go 10 degrees of flaps. There's 90 knots, we'll go zero. I've got to go right through that hole over there. Which looks to be, I mean, the ridge right there, the call call gap, 7,000, so I gotta be right, and no echoes 77, 78, 100 feet. Broken tower, no open echo to departure time, 2 zero, tracking 302 on climb 1 2000, estimating Yon by talk 03. November Tango Echo, no copy, departure time 1 2000, distance additional to company Lumetel Kilo. One five miles west, contact Mosby, one two zero decimal one, one six five nine eight. One two zero one six five nine eight one five, copy company, no number tango echo. Hey, altimeter setting is flashing because this is our local Q and H, so we're gonna just put it on down to let's say one zero one two and we'll see what Moresby tells us for our area Q and H here, our altimeter setting here in just a minute. And our advisory, uh, turn that off, that was just our engine inlet normal. Basically, I put it back to normal after takeoff. Let's pitch for 100 knots so that I can get up over top of these clouds right here. I'm guessing 7,700 will probably do it. And now that I'm up here, 7,500, I'm starting to see the other side. There's like a hole right through there. And as I come up, I'm looking to see, am I seeing more and more of the mountain as I get closer or am I seeing less and less? If I'm seeing more, that means I'm above that cloud and I can just continue on at that altitude. If I'm climbing and I'm starting to see less and less, that means I'm not gonna make it. Hey, we're just keeping our best rate of climb right at 99 knots, 100 knots. I've got another layer out here. And it looks like I should still be able to climb over that. I'm only climbing at 600 feet per minute, which is not amazing this morning. I would imagine more closer to seven to 800 feet, but I think we'll still get over top of this because I'm starting to see that cloud pop out. I'm starting to see it grow as I'm getting closer. At least in my eyes it does. Now it's just kind of staying stagnant, so we'll see. Oh, nope, there we go. Now I'm starting to see more, which means that I am getting over top of this layer right here as is. I'm going to start turning. I need to actually go that way for Yambai Talk. Uh, you can also see the clouds are kind of rising that way because we've got higher mountains here, 8,000 or so, and then a big valley here, so they're going to naturally just want to go down. Moore's B, 65, 9 or 8, November Tango Echo. Station calling Moore's B, 65, 9 or 8. November Tango Echo. Passing 10,700 on climb 12,000, estimating Yambai Talk 0. Three. November Tango Echo, copy it. One, two thousand, additional traffic to November Tango Kilo, area H one zero one one. One zero one one, November Tango Echo. All right, we've got one zero one one in our primary as well as our secondary. So that was one off. It's usually about ten below or thereabouts. You can see here, this magenta line goes right through this dark area right here. That's a Mount Wilhelm, a 15,000 foot mountain. So that's not gonna work if I go over there. I also have this darker area right here, which is around an 11, 12,000 foot mountain. If I just push over, you can just see it just peeking out right there. So I'm at 11.4 right now. I'm hoping that my 12,000 will get me over this top layer, but now looking kind of where it is as 
comparison to the Mount Michael way over there, the big tall one, it's almost the same level. So I think I'm not going to make it over that. So I'm hoping now <laughs> that I'll be just below that. All right, less than 100 feet to go before 12,000. Is it starting to level off? Starting to get rid of, rid of that right rudder pressure that I had in climb. Turn our taws back on. We're waiting for about 128 knots and then I'm starting to slowly pull my power out. I pull it out down to 1270. And then by the time it gets to 1270, I usually just let it sit there for a second. And usually it will kind of settle down eventually down to 1250. But apparently I pulled it a little bit too slow because I was just sitting right at 1270. So we'll go a little bit more down to 1250, 2000 RPM on the prop. Then we're just verifying that we're under 700 degrees on our ITT just for our cruise. Or really once we get over, well, in different airplanes it's different. And this airplane's probably 13,000 in Zulu. It's probably right around that 12,000 mark, 12.5 or something like that. It's just the performance of the engine dictates that, how well the engine is performing. Right now we're just using 96% of the capacity of the engine. This is a great time to start getting ready to go over the, uh, the runway. Let's go over here to arrival. We're coming in from this direction. We're going to fly directly overhead, and then you guys would see it's not really a, uh, a standard circuit. You kind of follow the mountain over here, you kind of go over to the mountain over here, and then right at this specific little kind of joggle in the trees on the side of the hill, I want to be 900 feet at that point turning final, which is around 400 feet AGL, so it's a pretty short final. It's pretty much flat. Less than a percent, 700, I mean 527 meters long, 500 foot elevation. So we're leaving at 12,000 all the way down. Let's go ahead and put our descent profile in here. We're going to come over here to the altitude and put in our, our altitude that we want for our pattern altitude, 1,500 feet, hit enter. It automatically puts in just a three degree all the way down. I'm going to go down at 900 feet per minute. And that will eventually turn out to be closer to a thousand foot because I'm not going to adjust my power on my descent. I'm just going to keep it cruise power all the way down. So my speed will come up, which will then make that need to be closer to a thousand on the way down. It will put a top of descent reminder, this TOD, way up there. And then it also will tell me it's in 23 minutes right here. You guys can see just how many clouds there are out today. It has been like this, well, even worse, all week long. We've already had two turnaround flights from Haya coming back. That was the video that you guys, if you saw the video just before this video, that's where I went. Very muddy, very, very muddy. Now this mountain here underneath the clouds is my last mountain that I have basically before I can start my descent. You guys can see right here on the little inset, it's yellow, which means that it is basically 100 feet to 1,000 feet. I'm probably, I don't know, six to 700 feet, maybe, not even know if it's that. Probably that's less than 500 feet over top of the, the very ridge. But our top of descent's not so way up here, so. It looks like there's some kind of layers. There's a lower layer down here in the Jimmy Valley, which is higher than the Wagi Valley over here. And then we've got this layer right here, kind of 13,000, and it just kind of goes right over the backside of Mount Michael. I'm really hoping that I can just remain here so I don't have to kind of step down going in. But we'll see. A lot of times, let me show you here on this chart. So the X is where we're going, we're close to. We've got like kind of a lower layer here filling in this. I'm guessing once we get to this bigger area, it's gonna open up a little bit. And then there's just gonna be kind of clouds on the sides of the mountains once we get to that point. That's just my guesstimation. I really don't know if that's gonna be the case, but that's like what it is a lot of times. Let me just quickly draw again where Yambai Talk is there. So we have that just for visual reference. 
I'll do a couple degrees to the left just so I can kind of stay above this little tiny cloud layer, what it looks like to me. It might be harder to see actually on camera. I can't really tell, but sometimes your eyes can differentiate like, is this cloud closer to me or what does it look like? And that's something that took me a long time of studying clouds in New Guinea is to how to read them. Are they closer? Are they above? Are they below? What's a trend is, you know, so that you can plan out your trip to go. Because, I mean, just following magenta line, well, like today is a great example. It does not work. It would take me right through that huge 15,000 foot mountain. So knowing as I come back as well, I'll do a film on the way back. So time lapse. A lot of people have really enjoyed those, kind of concluding the video there and back to Garoka. Some don't really like it that much. That's fine. But... I, I like time lapses. I think it gives you a really quick flight back in two or three minutes, what it looked like for me and as I get back. So my plan is to basically fly almost exactly the same flight that I flew here, where I'm flying over Chimbu and then into Garoka. Because all this right here, as the day goes on, is probably just going to build up with clouds. And really knowing what to be looking for really does help navigate through mountains and clouds. It's not just Let's just use the chart and go for it. It's looking dark up there, which means that it's a, a fairly thick overcast layer over top of Yambai Talk with potential maybe even some showers in the area. It didn't show that from the picture. It wasn't forecasting any rain showers. I'm really, really hoping that's not the case. We've got an extra half hour of fuel on board and I am willing to use it today so I don't have to go back because that would just that would just ruin the whole day. You know what? I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start my descent now. It's a fairly slow one. But looking out there about 30 miles is where I'm starting to see another lower layer. Maybe like eight or nine thousand feet start. And that's probably right about where my top of descent is. So I'm just gonna slowly start going down now so that it's not like a massive change. We hit my vertical speed button here and we'll just do, let's just do 300 feet per minute. And we're gonna go all the way down to say 6,000 feet. Hold vertical speed, altitude together. It puts a little altitude selected right here in white, letting you know when you get to that altitude, it's gonna go ahead and level off. You know what, I think I'm just gonna go 500 feet per minute down there sooner than later. That way I can see when I'm at the same level and I can look underneath, it gives me an idea, it just gives me more time to really evaluate what the clouds are doing and my plan of action because just looking as I'm getting closer, there is a lot of just scattered to broken, I'd say more broken clouds right down on the valley floor. I was kind of hoping by now they'd start to be clearing out a little bit more, but maybe this high overcast layer, I overestimated its ability to clear some of those clouds. Looking down through that valley, I mean, I can see the ridges on either side, but down right on the ground nearly, or a thousand foot above. It, it, yeah, it's scattered to broken pretty good. Not awesome. So let's go ahead, now that I'm below the layer, let's come on all the way down to 1,500 feet here. I can look at my little blue banana here and then readjust Bring it on down to 600 feet per minute now. Getting a little bit of left rudder pressure in as we're speeding up and going down. As that's not really the picture that I was envisioning when I looked at his picture. Look at his picture again. Oh yeah, I mean you got some clouds over here. The circuit looks like it's open all the way to final. Pretty high over here. It looks like I can see where my base is. Unless I'm just reading this picture wrong, which I could be, but what it looks like to me is it's gonna take all the way till I get over top to really get a good evaluation on 
is this going to work or not? I still have 13 minutes to go. So sometimes you can follow the river right here all the way down into it. But not always. Uh, see, I've got another layer right here. We do have rain on these mountains, which is... I'm wondering if it's just rain in between me and them, and that's what's making it look so bad. Let's throw our terrain on here so I have an idea of what we're looking at here. Especially as I start descending down, working weather, I really want to know, am I already below the terrain or am I above it? That is looking like a lot of clouds packed in there. Oh, the other option I have is to get on top, go out to the sea peak, and then come in that way because the picture was showing that there was some sunlight out towards the sea peak. These mountains are 7,600, so I might have to do that because this is looking like a lot more rain than I was anticipating. Uh, 6,500, so I really need to get up to like 9,000, get over these mountains safely. But I've got multiple layers here. I've got one on the ground, one looks to be maybe 5,000, one here is closer to 7,000. I'm not seeing any ridges in there at all. I'm not terribly heavy up today. That kind of just gives me an idea of how quickly I can maneuver and stuff. All right, I think I'm seeing a ridge out there, which might be these ridges that you can kind of see right here in front. Those are the ones right at Yambai Talk. I'm gonna continue on this way. I'm, I feel like I'm seeing, I've got 33 more miles to go. I think these right here that I'm seeing, I think those are the ones that I'm seeing up there. Does not look like great visibility. I'll give you that. Not at all. Slower descent a little bit though. And it's starting to just barely mist on the windshield, which is the hardest. Then, it, thankfully I just polished the windshield. We use Pledge Furniture Cleaner. That kind of beads it off, but... Alright, maybe I'm just going through this little bit of rain here because now it's starting to get clear just that second. Maybe it was just this little bit of mist that was really making the illusion that the visibility was horrible. Not amazing yet, <laughs> but it's looking more doable now. Right, let's continue slowing our descent. We don't need to get down there so fast. There we go, that's better. 400 feet per minute looks like it'll get us there better. It looks like there might be some potential sprinkles up there in the circuit. I'm on a direct track. At this altitude, I'm just going to hold this altitude here actually. Because I need to go around this river right here. And I'm already below the ridges here. So, there's a bunch of clouds right in that little kind of valley right there. So I'm going to wait till I get up there and then I can always make a quick descent after that. But there's no point in rushing down. I have to get back up. All right, we're at 4,300 feet. Let's go ahead and pull our torque on back to 1250 for here. Conserve on some fuel that we might need. I'm really looking here at my fuel flow. I really want it to be 320 or below. So it's actually we're closer to 1200. I'm at a lower altitude. And it's still going to give me the same indicated airspeed. Alright, so yeah, my plan is to kind of follow the river all the way around, kind of like I was showing you here. Uh, let's go ahead and do our landing checklist. Let's turn our TAWS off. Our VREF is 6300 landing, so 69 knots. Let's do our lights and inlet. And our board is a short final. It might be different today with clouds in the circuit potentially, but it's usually short final off to the left.
That's autopilot off. I climb back up just a tiny bit so I'm not skirting these clouds right at the top level of them. I thought they're going to move very fast, but if I misjudge something, it's a lot harder. I'd rather descend fast than try to climb fast. We've got prop and harness here in a minute. We've got 20 miles still to go. Okay, I am starting to see a ridge way out there in the distance, 20 miles out just past Yombai Talk. That's a really good sign. Maybe it's just these couple little areas of misty rain that is making the visibility so horrible because I just got out of it and I'm already starting to see a lot better. I will remain here at 5,000 feet. Like I was mentioning when we were taking off, if you want to get into flight simulator stuff, I actually have a course, um, an online course you guys can take specific to the Kodiak so that you guys can learn how I do all my procedures and take off, landing, climb, descent, cruise, everything that I do. I mean, you can get a lot of the same information from these videos, but this is a really concise one area place so you can get it really fast. So if you want to get into flight simulator stuff, you know nothing about G1000, you know nothing about flying at all, or even Kodiaks. I mean, you can use it as an introductory level for someone who knows nothing, or someone who just wants to learn something new like the Kodiak, and then maybe practice coming into some of these fun places that we're going into today. All right, clouds, yeah, kind of just broken all the way down to the ground for about 2,000 feet. I'm at five, yeah, so about 2,000 feet, 2,500 feet worth of them, but it looks like they're just mainly on the sides. Middle of the valley is still open. That is good. Still can't see it, we're still 14 miles out. But you can check out the link down below. Um, I'm running a sale on it, I think I ran it last week, it still might be going on today. So check that link out down below. It's 50% off if, the, if, the, if I am still running it. I don't remember the date that I had it set to. But check out the link down below. Now it's time to do it if you want to save 50%. All fish jump by talk. Kodiak Nova Plango Echo, one one miles to the southeast. Passing 4,600 on descent. Circuit time jump by talk, zero three. Let's see what runway is it again? Runway two one. So it's OBS runway 210. Advisory within 10 miles. Yes, I know. It's looking just like the picture he sent me. <laughs> Valley's kind of open ish. The clouds are on the side of the mountain ish. So let's head on down to 1500 feet for pattern altitude. Go prop and harness. Eight miles out, but that's all right. We'll get a prop board. The more you can do earlier on, the less mistakes you're going to make. Your brain is not overloaded yet. Two word yet. Actually, the picture looks about exactly like it was before, just kind of hanging out. Let's go 10 degrees of flaps. Coming up on our 1500 foot pattern altitude. There we go, 200 to go. Be around 1,200 feet over there, 900 foot turning final. Yeah, no, that, that looks good. There's some definite clouds. Let's go 20 degrees of flaps. There's our 1,500 feet. Runway looks good. He's somebody walking across, but they're moving off. Okay. Looks good. So it's 69, 79, and 89. 89 and down, which we are right now. A little bit slow. Be a little bit tighter of a circuit 500. because of this cloud. Little sprinkles that should clear off by the time we get on up final. Going on down to 79. Full flaps now. Got clouds right in my way. A seven knots headwind, which is great. Five hundred. Our 
All right, there's close to my 900. Here's my trees that I wanted. Slow on down. Ring final. This looks good. There's our 69, there's 500 foot on the descent. Around looks nice. Cliff is complete. All right, we're committed. Oh, this thing is cut so nice. Used to be like horrible before they had good lawn mowers, but now it is like a golf course. That's awesome. I well, hope you guys enjoyed that. Like I said, I'm gonna do some unloading here, and then I've got 45 minute flight back to Garok. I'm gonna do a time lapse for you guys, so you guys can see how I get out of here down the way back.